Hello, welcome to 8.9 News. I'm Finlo Kostain. In the early 1970s, US Agriculture Secretary Earl Bunce infamously commanded farmers to get big or get out. Ben Hartman considered the suggestion disastrous, and in his book, The Lean Microfarm, he shows how small, hyperlocal farms can be both ecologically and economically superior to industrial scale operations geared towards export and commodity markets. I spoke to Ben Hartman and started by asking him how big his farm is and what he produces. Our farm is uh, one third of one acre, uh, 15,000 square feet. Our main products our baby cut greens, uh, arugula, spinach, salad mix, that sort of thing, uh, and tomatoes. We have a box scheme, and so we sell diversified. We we grow a diversified range of crops, from onions to carrots, and everything in between. Also, now Ben, you started out with an acre, but then chose to downsize to just a third of an acre. How difficult was that process? Well, the decision was relatively easy to make. Uh, the implementation quite difficult, uh, but the rewards, the payoffs, have been huge. Uh, we made that decision largely because we had two young kids. <laughs> we were fa- farming full tilt 50, 60 hours a week and realized that we needed to make something, something had to change if we were uh, going to maintain our sanity through the these young childhood years. And uh, also it was an opportunity to apply. We've been using the lean system, just started using the lean system uh, on our farm and realized that there are just huge potentials to this new way of thinking. There's no way way of thinking about farming. So it was an opportunity to build a farm from the ground up uh, using uh, lean systems and thinking. And the rewards for us have been that we now earn as much income uh, as we did on that larger scale farm. Uh, Even though we drastically shrunk the size of our farm, we sell all of our food within a mile and a half of the farm. Uh, All of our inputs, our fertility, fertilizer in in the form of compost comes from uh, within a mile and a half of the farm. And how did you build up your customer base? Were they people that you already knew or were you starting from scratch? Uh, about half were people we knew and about half were new customers. And what we did uh, was relied on Google Maps uh, to give us a printout of everyone who, who potentially could buy food from us within a few miles of the farm. We're at the edge of a city of about 40,000 people, a small college town in Indiana, uh, not necessarily a foodie destination. Uh, but we just had to check assumptions at the door and uh, and and have some uh, and do some research. And so one of our longest running accounts is actually a donut shop, sells our lettuce and tomatoes on, uh, on their lunch menu. And uh, we what we did was uh, search those customers who are closest to our farm um, and who uh, would be able to pay us uh, living wages and you might might order in sufficient volume from us. And of the 60 or so potential customers, we chose just four or five that we deliver to uh, on a regular basis. So we're very choosy with our customers and who we sell to, and that helps keeps our margins to where we can make a uh, living wage for our work. Thinking about the farm itself and your way of working, are you able to recycle the nutrients that you have in your soil, or are you dependent on chemical fertilizers? Well, yeah, like I said, all of our inputs come from within a mile and a half uh, of the farm. And that's in the form of leaves uh, from oak and maple trees, mostly uh, from around our farm. And uh, we've partnered with some landscape companies in the city to to drop those raw materials off on our farm. We make a big heap, turn them two or three times. It's it's very rough, you know, crude compost. And then we'll pl- apply four, we put, put four inches of it on the soil surface uh, and what we call the deep mulch me- method. I uh, don't till, till it in. We don't even own a, a tiller uh, that we use here and simply grow into the compost. You have the benefits of weed smothering, long-term fertility, uh, excellent tilth, and, and of course, uh, low or actually no cost for our fertility. Now, you've mentioned tomatoes and lettuces. Are you essentially running a micro row crop system or is there a more three-dimensional element as well? Well, it's not exactly row crop because we use a bed system uh, to grow our food. Our beds are one meter in width and a, uh, um, uh, about 50 meters or so in length. And um, we, the difference, the main difference, key difference between a, a, what we do in a row cropping system would be the nimbleness with which we make our decisions. We're, uh, we have uh, 50 some beds on our farm. And so we're constantly swapping those out, growing two or three crops this season and constantly changing what we're doing and crops we're putting in based on changing demand from our customers, 
restaurants are always closing and opening. People's tastes change all the time. Uh, menus change at these restaurants. And so to be able to keep up, to keep that close, tight relationship with our customers has really been key. Now, I'm thinking about the economics of your farm, and I'm wondering whether it's really possible to earn enough for a family to live on from just a third of an acre, and whether you could share some of your business model. Well, what, the way I put it, it's school teacher wages, not doctor wages, um, but it's a fair, fair living. Uh, and uh, the way to we think about it is on a square foot basis, a third of an acre, the amount of land we have in production is 15,000 square feet. And so if we can sell five or six dollars per square foot, uh, then we're achieving uh, gross sales of seventy five, eighty thousand dollars a year. And with uh, some true business practice and, and lean mindset, uh, we're able, we can net uh, around half. And so the key is to make sure we're putting in crops that can yield that. And we're like I said, growing two th or three crops per season uh, per square foot. And so really we need crops that give us uh, around $3 a square foot per harvest, which is ach achievable. Uh, a head of lettuce, uh, for example, takes about a square foot and can sell for about $3 per head in most markets here. And it's the darn simplest crop to grow. <laughs> Uh, very uh, few pests want to come after it and uh, very little can go wrong with it. And we can grow two of those per season uh, per square foot. Now you can mix in other crop, high, higher dollar value crops like cilantro and tomatoes and, and uh, achieve a uh, higher square foot income. The challenge is to cut out the waste. Notice when defect is entering into your production system. Uh, every crop, every seed should turn into cash is the way we think of it and that hasn't happened, then there's there's a problem somewhere. And it's about being uh, disciplined uh, and noticing when uh, the waste, waste of overproduction, uh, excess motion. Uh, in Japan, the Toyota production system, identi they identified seven types of mudas or waste. And those types of waste uh, are very much present uh, on farms uh, as as much as they are in, in, in any other work environment. The last few decades have seen the growth of really very large farms. But before that, many people were producing food from their backyards, either for local markets or for home use. Do you anticipate a return to micro farming? And if you do, what do you think will drive that shift? Oh, you know, a University of Colorado study last year uh, showed that if trends, if current trends continue, continue we'll have half as many farmers at the end of this century as we do uh, right now. And farms at the end of the century will be twice as large. So we're on a fast track to gigantism uh, here. So the, the, the headwinds are very strong. However, I'm, I'm hopeful because I've, uh, I've done trainings around the world. I've seen optimism. I've seen that people, especially the youth, want to eat better food. They recognize that the food they're given from the industrialized food system is crap. It's making them sick. Uh, calling, calling cancer rates in the U.S. Uh, among young people are going through the roof. Uh, obesity among young people uh, is an ep 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 epidemic uh, levels here, and it's uh, for our own health. Much not 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 to mention for the sake of the environment, health of the environment. We need to make a change and pivot so that we put small farms at the center of our food system instead of pushed out to the to the margins. That was Ben Hartman, author of The Lean Microfarm. More news on our website, 8.9.com. That's all for now. We're back soon. Thanks for watching.